to Goop Tales, episode 27, Jardad and the Plain of Jars. Jardad was of those chosen few who always are both kind and true. He did not interrupt or tease. He knew the proper way to sneeze. He knew the proper way as well to pound and rattle, slam and yell. Chapter 1. Once upon a time, there was a noisy young goop named Jardad. Jardad made an awful racket wherever he went. It seemed as if noise just followed him around. Jardad was never without his handy workman apron that carried a little hammer and nails. Fixing things was his specialty, and it almost always required making a great deal of noise. Other than his loud banging and knocking around, Jardad was quite a delight to spend time with. He and his good goop friend, bad in school, got on like a house on fire, as his mother liked to say. Whenever she said that, Jardad and bad in school would laugh and laugh and say to each other, what is that supposed to mean? I think it's supposed to mean that we get on well, but house on fire? Who knows how my mom comes up with this stuff, said Jardad. And then they would both roll their little goop eyes. One early fall day, right after school had started, Jardad and Baden School decided to play hooky. They didn't exactly consider it hooky because they were both sent home from school. Jardad had been using his hammer to fix his desk, and when his teacher, Mr. Snaggletooth, walked by, he accidentally slammed his hammer right down on Mr. Snaggletooth's toes. <coughs> Mr. Snaggletooth let out a huge wailing scream, and everyone stopped and stared at him. His mouth was wide open, and his big Snaggletooth was in full view, so all of the goops began to laugh. Jardad was immediately sent home. Bad in school was in another classroom, and she heard the loud scream. She guessed what had happened, so she drew a little drawing of Mr. Snaggletooth with one tooth and a wide-open mouth on her little chalkboard, and then she passed it around for everyone to see. The chalkboard got passed right to Miss Wigglebutt, who didn't think it was funny at all. She sent Bad in School home. Bad in School and Jardad met up on the walk home. They both giggled as they discussed Mr. Snaggletooth and Miss Wigglebutt. Well, look, we have the whole day off. I mean, really, it would be a shame to waste it, said Bad in School. Hmm, said Jardad. Generally, Jardad followed the rules, and he knew he was supposed to go home. But the thought of having a fun day off with Bad in school, while everyone else was still in school, was very tempting. What did you have in mind? he asked. How about the zoo? It is the middle of a school day, and I don't think anyone will be there but the animals. We could even sneak in, answered Bad in school. Jardad thought for a minute. He hadn't been to the zoo in a very long time. And it was true that they would probably have the entire thing to themselves. After all, it wasn't his fault he was sent home. He hit Mr. Snaggletooth's foot accidentally. He certainly hadn't planned this. But now that he had been sent home, He may as well make the most of it. Okay, let's do it, he called out. Bad in school and Jardad scurried off to the zoo. Upon arrival, they were met with a closed sign. Ugh, I forgot the zoo was closed on Mondays, griped Jardad. Don't let that stop us, said Bad in school as she headed around to the back of the zoo. 
Jardad and Baden School walked all the way around the giant zoo, rattling and banging away until they reached the back, where there was a giant grassy field with mountains behind it. Sitting smack in the middle of the field were a group of zoo animals. There was a tiger, a lion, an elephant, a zebra, an orangutan, a koala, a gorilla, a rhinoceros, a bear, and a red panda. They were all grouped together, and no one was in a cage. Jardad stopped in his tracks and stared over at Bad in School, with disbelief and a little bit of fear. Oh, we heard you coming. So we thought we would come out here to see what all the ruckus was about, said the koala. It's our day off, and we were trying to take a nap. And then you come along banging away. We need a break too, you know. Whoops, sorry, said Jardad as he looked down at his feet. So what are you two doing here? Shouldn't you be in school? asked the zebra. Well, um, not today, said Bad in school as she glanced over at Jardad. We took a day off, too. Well, who knew you could take a day off from school? Certainly not me, chimed in the red panda. Well, you can't take a day off school and then come over to the zoo and disturb our peace. I'm not having it, growled an angry orangutan. Then... Without any warning at all, the orangutan reached out one of his long, orange, hairy arms, picked up Jardad, and flung him across the sky as he called out, Go make noise uh, somewhere else. Chapter 2 Jardad flew through the air. The ground beneath him got further and further away until it was just a dot. He closed his eyes and held on tightly to his tiny hammer. Eventually, he had to come down. After some time, the air grew warmer and Jardad could feel himself being lowered to the ground. He landed gently on soft grass. It was just beginning to get dark and the clouds in the sky looked as if they were ready to pour down rain. There were ruins of a giant temple and jungles nearby. It was hot and humid. Jardad looked around trying to figure out where he was. Nothing looked familiar. He walked over to the doorway of the temple ruins and stepped inside. It was dark and quiet and oh so hot. It was too dark to see anything, so Jardad turned around to leave and came face to face with a tiger standing in the doorway. The tiger was about one inch from Jardad's face and staring him straight in the eyes. His eyes were piercing yellow. He opened up his mouth and let out a huge tiger growl. Jardad couldn't stand it. He wasn't really much of a fighter, and he knew he couldn't outrun the tiger. So he managed to squeak out. Just swallow me really fast. I'll close my eyes. Did I scare you? asked the tiger. Jardad hardly knew what to say. Of course you did. Aren't you going to eat me? he asked. No, I'm not going to eat you. But I am so happy I scared you. I've never done that before, replied the tiger. Done what? Scared someone? You're a tiger. Everyone's scared of you, said Jardad. None of the other tigers are scared of me. They think that I'm wimpy, said the tiger sadly. Well, I don't think you're wimpy. You're the scariest tiger I've ever seen, said Jardad and he was telling the truth. The tiger was delighted. For the first time in his life, 
he had scared someone. He made a note to himself that he needed to hang around other creatures and not just tigers. I certainly don't want to eat you. In fact, I can probably help you. You're in Lao, you know, and there are jungles and, and landmines and endangered animals here. I don't know where you're from, but you're going to need some help to figure this place out. Jardad told the tiger all about how he landed in Lao. And the tiger told Jardad that if he wanted to get back home to Goop World, he would need to find his way to the plain of jars and hop inside a jar. You'll face obstacles along the way. You never know which animal will be your friend. And there are landmines all over Lao that were left here by a war long, long ago. If you step on a landmine, mm, it can all blow up, and you'll blow up with it. You must move quietly and pay close attention to everything. The Plain of Jars was built thousands of years ago. It's just a plain scattered with giant stone jars. And you've got to hop inside of one and make a wish. And your wish will be granted. But you have to get there first. Jardad's head was spinning. How was he supposed to see the landmines? How would he know which animals to trust? And how long would it take to get to the Plain of Jars? I want you to come with me, tiger, please, pleaded Jardad. I can't. This is your journey, and you need to take it on your own. Besides, I want to go tell the other tigers how I scared you, replied the tiger. Then he turned and silently ran away. Jardad started off towards the Plain of Jars. He had to cross the country of Lao to arrive there. He started on an open field that was long and wide. The air was hot and sticky, and Jardad was tired. So he decided to sing as he passed through the field to pass the time. Ten green bottles hanging on the wall. Ten green bottles hanging on the wall. And if one green bottle should accidentally fall, there'd be nine green bottles hanging on the wall. Jardad was so absorbed in his singing that he didn't even notice the landmine he was about to step on. Chapter 3 Jardad was one step away from the hidden landmine when he looked up and saw a clouded leopard racing straight for him. Before he could move another inch, the leopard whizzed by him, knocking him over, and then disappeared in a cloud of dust. Jardad lay on the ground and was face to face with the landmine. He carefully stood up and moved away. It took him three hours to move through the rest of the field. He practically crawled, his face was so close to the ground. He had come so near to stepping on a landmine that he just couldn't take that chance again. He saw several more as he inched along through the field. He thought about all the animals who lived nearby and how they were at risk every day. He wished the leopard wouldn't have zoomed away so quickly. It would have been nice to have some company along his journey but he knew the leopard probably wanted to get out of there as quickly as possible. When Jardad finally reached the end of the field, he flung himself into the shade of the surrounding trees. Not too far in the distance, he could hear the sound of a waterfall. So off he set in the direction of the falls. Jardad whacked through trees with his hammer and bumped about making all kinds of noise. He had just knocked down a giant bush. 
when he heard a loud growling off in the distance. Jardad froze. He remembered the words of the tiger and how he wouldn't know which animal was friendly or not. He looked around and saw no one. He held up his hammer and slowly turned around, hitting everything near him. Suddenly, he came face to face with a tiger. Jardad stared right in the tiger's eyes. The tiger and Jardad stared at each other in silence for almost a minute. No one moved. The only sound to be heard was the thumping of Jardad's chest. The tiger couldn't stand it anymore. Did I scare you? He asked as he burst out laughing his tiger laugh. (laughs) Jardad started laughing too. You did. You scared me. You got me good. I think you're the scariest tiger I've ever met. Well, okay, you're the only tiger I've ever met. But you're still scary, said Jardad. Excellent. I'm glad my tiger skills are getting better. I scared you twice in a row. Now, of course, I had an advantage because I knew you were coming. Remember what I told you about being quiet? Asked the tiger. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, that's really hard for me. But I'll try and keep it in mind, said Jardad. The scary tiger told Jardad to ride down the blue waterfalls. They were a shortcut to the plain of jars, and they were nice and cool. He also reminded Jardad to keep quiet so no one would hear him coming. Jardad thanked him and set off for the falls. He almost shouted for joy when he found them. They were turquoise blue and had tiny little layers of falls that were like little slides. Jardad jumped in and started splashing and sliding. Wahoo! He shouted. The water felt delicious after such a long, hot afternoon. Off in the distance, far away, an angry rhinoceros heard the sound of Wahoo! Echoing off the waterfalls. Chapter 4 Jardad slipped and slided through the waterfalls, going over one little slide after another. He was quickly moving down the river and having the best time. He delighted the whole way down, singing, Ten green bottles hanging on the wall. Ten green bottles hanging on the wall. And if one green bottle should accidentally fall, there'd be nine green bottles hanging on the wall. He laughed and splashed until he finally came to his stopping point. Jardad got out, hopped on the riverbank, and headed off toward the plain of jars. But he stopped in his tracks as he heard a grunting in the distance. It was a deep sound, and one he had never heard before. Who could that be? He thought to himself. He started to run through all the animals he could think of. A giraffe? No. A lion? No. A tiger? No, definitely not. A bear? Mm Mm-mm. An orangutan? For sure, no. A rhino... Jardad barely finished the thought when he realized that was it. He had heard a rhinoceros. He looked all around and saw nothing. Then he heard the grunting again in the distance. He didn't want to meet a rhinoceros face to face. They always seemed the scariest animals. And if you made them angry, they could be even scarier. Jardad wondered if the rhinoceros had heard him splashing through the waterfalls. Maybe he had woken him up from his afternoon nap. Then Jardad thought about all of the animals at the zoo. No one was happy about being awoken from a nap. As he pondered the situation, 
Jardad heard heavy running. A running sound coming in his direction thundered in the background. He looked around, desperate for a place to hide. He could dive back into the water, but the rhino could follow him right in. The pounding hooves got closer as he tried to make up his mind. Jardad held his little hammer high above his head. He didn't know what else to do. He thought maybe it would scare off the rhino. He stood in the middle of the rainforest, turning in circles with his hammer, as he listened to thundering hooves getting closer and closer. He watched the tree branches shake and the plants move. Everything in the path of the angry rhino was being trampled. I'm next! I'm going to be trampled, Jardad thought to himself. He looked up at the sky, wishing it would swallow him up and take him away. But instead, he saw a white-cheeked gibbon come flying out of nowhere. The gibbon swooped down from the trees above and plucked up Jardad with one arm just as the rhino plowed through the little patch of dirt where Jardad had been standing. The gibbon looked down at Jardad and said, Georgina Gibbon at your service. I'm not really a fan of that mean old rhino. He terrorizes anyone who dares to make a noise at nap time. Jardad was almost speechless, but he managed to squeak out. Thank you. No worries, mate. I'm happy to help. Where to? asked Georgina. Well. If you could manage, I would love to go to the Plain of Jars, said Jardad very sweetly. Of course I can manage that. It's no problem. I can fly through the air to the nearest tree, but then I'll have to fling you. You'll fly for a while, but you'll make it. Will that work for you? asked Georgina. It sure will. I've been flung before replied Jardad. So Georgina Gibbon swung from branch to branch with all the strength she could muster, and then she lifted her arm back and threw Jardad as far and as long as she could. Jardad sailed across the sky. He looked down below and saw giant funny-looking stone jars, just the way he imagined. Georgina Gibbon had a perfect aim, and Jardad descended at just the right moment. He landed in one of the jars and made his wish without wasting a second. After all, there was an angry rhino somewhere not too far off. I want to go back home to Goop World, Jardad said. And so he did. He landed back near the zoo, all of the animals had gone back to work. He looked around for Bat in school, but she was nowhere to be found. Bat in school was stuck underneath the shell of a giant tortoise in the Galapagos. But that is a tale for another time. Hey there, it's Maria. Thanks for listening to Goop Tales. If you want to listen to another one, all you have to do is click on your screen and you can. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Goop Tales and you'll always be notified when there's a new one. You can tag us on social media at Goop Tales on either Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to hear your questions and comments. And you can also leave me a voicemail if you go to gooptales.com and use the little prompt in the sidebar. Okay, I will see you in the next Gooptale.